times we're live. So you all have a lesson. We're going to go about half an hour into this lesson. I'm going to stop. Then I'll give you the rest of the class to work on the conservation momentum and any other missing stuff. Then we'll pick up with this lesson on Tuesday. I'm right now leaning towards your test being a week from next week, Tuesday. So a week from the, that Tuesday. And this one is called Lesson 4, Problems Involving Momentum and Energy. Or if I want to put it into less physics terms, problems where there's a collision or an explosion, a jeune, and a change in height, change in speed. This is a job for conservation of energy. And th this first example, I've just realized I actually did in your last lesson. This was the uh, collision where the bullet stuck into the block. Who remembers what was the fancy term when they stuck together? Inelastic as opposed to elastic. So we have already done this example last class. I didn't make a video for it if you were away last class because it was only one example. You have to get the notes. It was just a short little dealie. And then we watched the Mythbusters video. What I want to jump then is, uh, oh, types of collisions. You know what? Apparently, I included this twice. I don't know. I know. So quick review, types of collisions where they stick together. We called that inelastic, where they bounce apart, rubber band, bounce, elastic. That there. You think you're missing a page? I don't think you are. I think you should move your eyes sideways. Knock, knock. OK, here we go. The ballistic pendulum, example one. OK? The ballistic pendulum is a fancy schmancy term. A pendulum is a hanging mass. Ballistics, think bullets. It's, hey, what if you fire a bullet into something that's hanging? What I tried to show in this picture here is that the bullet sticks into the pendulum. The mass of a pendulum is called a bob. Yeah, we're shooting bob. The bullet sticks into bob. They stick together, and they swing up. And here's what I want you to notice. Is there a collision? That's a job for conservation of momentum. Is there a change in height and a change in speed and a curvy path? There's also a conservation of energy component here. Okay? It says this, a bullet of mass m equals 0 0.0050 kilograms is traveling at 330 meters per second. It strikes a wooden pendulum bob of mass big M equals 0.85 kilograms and sticks. How high will the bullet and the bob swing? I'm going to argue, Shaq, that there's two components, two parts to this question, the collision and the swing. In fact, I'm going to divide my page down the middle. And I'm even going to write a little heading. Collision, swing. McKinley, what's this question asking me to find? Uh, how, high the how high? Is it a swinging change in height? Is it a curvy path? Is there a change in speed? You know what? The equation that's had how high, the height in it, that's a conservation of energy equation. So where it says swing, I'm going to write the law of conservation of energy. G, G, G. I'm going to go like this. And what we're talking about, by the way, folks, is this part right here. OK? That's the swing. Let me erase that. Are any of these values then 0? Is the initial speed that the mass and the bullet, the bullet and the block swing off together, is that initial speed 0? I don't think it could be, because otherwise they wouldn't go anywhere. Otla, what? You're saying we can let the ground be the height of the block? Sure, let's make that 0. Right? Because at the very, very top for a split second, how fast will it be traveling? 0. Again, this is not a vector question, yucky, curvy path, but I think we can handle this. So it's going to be. 
kinetic energy, a half. Which mass? I think both of them. V initial squared equals both of them GH final. Although, is there a bracket M plus big M in both term, in every term? You know what? In this case, cancel. McKinley, what did you say we're being asked to find? Height. How would I get the h, the height by itself? So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're saying the final height, Mr. Duick, is going to be the initial speed that they move off together squared divided by g. And I could put a 1 half in front. I'm just going to put a 2 there. I didn't see you. How did I do that? Boy, I asked, is Valoria here? I didn't even see you. You're here. Missed you. You were away last class. Did I give you the Mythbusters handout? That was dumb of me. This is also a nice little review of the last unit. Let's do our check to see if we can solve this. Uh, do I know? Do I know G? Yep. Do I know the initial speed that they start swinging off together? <gasps> gonna tell you what. It's not gonna be 330, because I think the bullet after it hits is going to slow down. Did I say the word hits? That's a synonym for collision. You know how I can find the speed that they swing off together at? This is a job for conservation of momentum. So now I'm going to go to the collision side here. I'm going to say, OK, this is a job for conservation of momentum. Seb, some of this looks familiar, except this is the physics 11. Everything's in a nice straight line version. Do we use momentum in physics 12? Yeah. Yeah. So angles is a little harder. Yeah. Fine, you can go. OK? Before the collision, oh, you know what? I was going to go mass B for bullet, but it also has mass B for bob. I could use little m and big M, but my little m's and my big m's look an awful lot alike. I'm going to call this mass 1. I'm going to call this mass 2. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Just mass 1? So it's going to be momentum 1 initial. Wham! They collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Stuck together or separate? Mass 1 plus mass 2. Psst. I think that V final is that V initial over here, because V final after the collision is the speed that they'll start moving off as they swing up together. Is it not? Ah, now I see where we're going. Uh, so let's get the V final. Oh, you can write that down, leave it. But if I'm going to be consistent, I should have written momentum of both final. And then I should have broken it down into MV. I'll do it on the next line. If you guys wrote it down, that's fine. Uh, momentum one is M1 V1 initial vector. And momentum both is M1 plus M2 V final. Whoops, sorry, guys. Got too eager to start plugging stuff in. So even though this question said find height, Anthony, I'm going to spend a lot of time finding the final speed after the velocity after the collision. Speaking of, how do I get the V final by itself? Now, the science physics nerd within me would love to then say, oh, now I have a new equation 
H final equals, don't write this down, M1 V1 over M1 plus M2 squared all over 2. That looks so cumbersome. This is one of the few times where I say, you know what? Let's get an answer and then just stick the answer over here. And let's not do this all algebraically. It's not that big a time savings. So, um, what was mass one? in kilograms. Point zero. How many grams was it? Oh, I gave it to you in kilograms? Sheesh, am I going soft or what? How many grams is point zero zero five? Five grams. A little light. I need to make this bull a little heavier. Point zero zero five. What's its initial velocity? 330, speed of sound. Speed of sound is, I, I always remember it as 333. I think it's 334 or something like that, but 333 is an easy number for me to remember. Speed of sound is around there. It varies temperature and altitude and humidity and other things, but around 330. So this bullet is just about ballistic. Oh, that's why it's called the ballistic pendulum. Squared? Nope, nope, not on momentum. All divided by 0 0.005 plus... 0.85. All right. After the collision, with what velocity do they move off together? Got a phone here? Yeah. Hey, let's swap a calculator for a phone. Let's give you something useful. Halen, what do we get? Don't forget to put the bottom brackets, right? You get uh, 1.93, yeah. is that right, folks? Now, we're not done. We can now plug that in over here. The final height is going to be 1.93 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. It's going to be this number squared, divided by bracket 2 times 9.8. Jeff, I get 0.19, so about 20 centimeters, 0.19 centimeters, oh, about that high. Is that okay, Kyle? Okay. Now, I mentioned this last day, but now I'll repeat. Um, this is how they used to do ballistics in the old days before radar, but they would reverse this procedure. Supposing you did this experiment, and Emma, we had a camera right here taking pictures with uh, strobe light and film, so that you were able to develop the film, and you knew how high it swung. If you knew the height, could you figure out the initial velocity that they moved off together at? Yep, uh, times 2 times g square root. If you knew the initial velocity that they moved off together at, if you knew this, could you figure out how fast the bullet was coming in at? Divide by the mass of the bullet. Could be done without fancy equipment, no stopwatch needed, you don't need to have human reaction time. All you need is a camera with good film, and the camera with the film worked great because that was analog technology. We can handle that, no problem. That's why this is called the ballistic pendulum. So as far as I'm concerned, and this is a challenging question, but as a nasty question on your test, I would have no problem either telling you how fast the bullet was coming in and then saying, hey, how high did it go? Or telling you, hey, here's how high it went. How fast was the bullet coming in at? Either of those. Is that okay? So there's one area, one application. Now, Tawny, not as good an application because now it's all done with electric eyes and computers and radar. Fine. But 
it was cool for a while. Oh, example two. I think we'll probably finish with this one. A five gram bullet is fired into a ballistic pendulum. If the bob has a mass of two kilograms and it rises a vertical distance of eight centimeters, how fast was the bullet moving? Um, okay. So we have kind of bullet. We have a mass hanging from a rope. There's the pendulum bob. And then they are going to swing off together. And they've given us this height. They've said the height is 0 0.08, 8 centimeters. And they want us to find that. Is that okay, Jake? Is there a collision? Is there also a change in height, change in speed, curvy path? This is a job for both conservation of momentum during the collision part and conservation of energy during the swingy part. Tarzan meets bullets. I'm going to divide my page in half. Okay? I'm going to have And I'm going to have for the swing part, since it's a change in height, change in speed, curvy path, I'm going to say, well, you know what? That's probably a job for conservation of, of, of energy. G, G, G. I think. In the swing, are any of those zero? Oh, you're, we're going to pretend, even though it's technically hanging, the nice thing about energy, since it's a scalar, Jeff, we can put the ground wherever we want to. Let's put the ground right at the bottom of the pendulum. Yes? It means it has no potential energy. And at the top, no kinetic energy. In fact, I get this, a half m1 plus m2, mass of both, the initial squared, equals m1 plus m2, mass of both, gh final. <gasps> Anna, look, 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 yay! Yeah? What do I want to find here right now? Sorry, what? I heard it. Yeah, I want to find V initial. Let's get the V initial by itself. Uh, how would I move that one half over? I could either divide by a half or I could times by two. I'm going to choose to times by two. So I'm going to go times by two, yoink, times by two. And I get VI squared equals two GH final. So, now what? V initial equals the square root of 2 G H final. The square root of 2, 9.8, 0 0.08. Point zero eight. I get one point. You know what? Since I'm going to use this to find other stuff, I'll carry all the sig figs. I'll go 1.568. Let's collide. Did I say collide? Why, that's a job for conservation of momentum. The sum of all the momentum before the collision equals the sum of all the momentum after the collision. Before the collision! What's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1. Momentum 1 initial, before. Kyle, knock, knock. 
Knock, knock. Wow, they collide. Really, Dane? Yep. I forgot to square root the VI? No. I really did forget to square root? Oh, I haven't done that for ages. I've done it on purpose sometimes to annoy students, but that wasn't on purpose. Oh, how about 1.252? I was so happy and it worked out so nice. For those of you watching at home, yeah. Oops. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get one. Was that for Ben? It's, it, they're pretty stale, sour gummy bears right now. They take some work. Um, wham, they collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? Fancy word? Inelastic. Uh, going to be mass 1 v1 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2 v final where v final I think is going to be v initial from the swing in fact what I want to find is v1 initial which I think is going to mean divide by m1 I think V1 initial is going to be M1 plus M2 V final over M1. It's going to be, where are my numbers here? 5 grams and 2 kilograms. 0 0.005 plus 2 times 1.252 divided by 0 0.005. I'm a little worried about my numbers. I have a feeling I'm going to have a really slow bullet. But let's see. Bracket 0 0.005 plus 2. I probably could have done that in my head. Times 1. Oh, heck. Times answer. But 0 Please give me a good answer. Oh, yeah, it's going faster than sound. Never mind, I take that back. 502 meters per second. This bullet's flying. So there is the ballistic pendulum. Example three. In designing a ballistic pendulum, you want a bullet of mass six grams and speed 600, I don't know what that, you know what? Let's scribble out that four right there. I don't think that's supposed to be there. I think it's supposed to be 600 meters per second, six times 10 to the two meters per second. To make a pendulum bob rise three centimeters, what mass must the bob have? Oh, what are they asking me to find here? M2. Probably can. You just double check I got that one, and then we're going to collide some roller coasters, right, Mr. Duick? Good. And okay, that's going to be it. Okay. Hmm. Give me one second here. So we're going to say this.
Okay. Uh, on Tuesday, I'll finish off this lesson. Oh, got the screen still frozen. Here, I'm typing like crazy. That's silly. There, let's try that. We're going to pause here. Today, you can hand in the Mythbusters assignment. Uh, work on conservation momentum one and two. If you finished it, you're good. Uh, if you have questions, I'm going to I'm going to help you. Also, if, any, if you have any questions from the momentum and impulse assignment from way back when, uh, Tuesday I will finish off today's lesson. I'm also going to have a take-home quiz for you on Tuesday and probably a few practice questions that involve both momentum and energy on Tuesday. And uh, then Thursday is going to be going over the take-home quiz review and your test is probably going to be next week, not this upcoming week, but the following Tuesday is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Any questions at all? So let me pause the little video thingy.